Welcome. I'm Alan McEachran, director of the GeoVista Center at Penn State. This GeoVista micro lecture introduces the concept of semiotics. For those unfamiliar with the term, semiotics is a field of study often characterized as the science of sign systems. Here, I'll provide a very brief introduction to the relevance of semiotics for mapping and geovisualization with an emphasis on the core concept of a sign. But what does that really mean? A first step in understanding this rather complex field of semiotics is to understand that the term sign here has a very special meaning. A sign in semiotics is a relationship in which one entity, called a sign vehicle, stands for another, called the referent. Words, for example, are sign vehicles that stand for reference in the world. Sign vehicles can be very general, for example, truck, or very specific, for example, Sally's truck, a particular truck owned by one person. In cartography, it's common to use the term symbol to refer to what semioticians mean by sign vehicle. For example, we say that a star is often used as a symbol to represent a capital city on a map. In semiotics, symbol is a special kind of sign vehicle, but we'll leave that complication for another day. According to the semiotic model that I adopt in how maps work, all signs have three parts. The two that I've already mentioned, the sign vehicle and the referent, plus an interpretant. This latter term is used to refer to the meaning associated with the sign. In this simple example, the referent is a piece of the world. A map is a sign vehicle that stands for that piece of the world, and within it are many more specific sign vehicles that stand for specific features in the world. These include the highway shield, the number eight, lines of different color and thickness, and so on. The user of this map, using cognitive schemata or mental models based on past experience, generates an interpretation from the map of what the real world is like. The triadic sign relationship highlighted here creates an interpretant focus by positioning the interpretant at the top of the diagram. This focus draws our attention to a wide range of issues about kinds of meaning that must be considered when we're designing maps, whether those maps are static or dynamic ones. It illustrates, for example, that symbolic representations of the kind often used in science have highly abstract sign relations, while figurative representations of the sort used in domains like urban design have highly iconic sign relations. Turning the sign relationship clockwise brings the sign vehicle into focus and emphasizes the many aspects of reference that sign vehicles can signify. One major distinction is among sign vehicles that apprise or let the user know about something versus those that stimulate some behavior or other reaction. For example, a shield with an 8 on a highway map will designate that the road is Interstate 8, while the same map might use a sunny yellow color to both designate a highway as a scenic route and to stimulate drivers to use it by connoting how pleasant their travel would be. One more turn of the semiotic triangle puts the focus on the referent. This perspective draws attention to the kinds of real-world entities that there are to signify. Categorizing reference is an important step in developing logical sets of sign vehicles for which interpretants are easy to determine and relate. This is a topic we'll pick up in a subsequent micro-lecture focused on sign system syntactics. Semiotics is a fascinating field of study with much to offer cartography and visualization more broadly. Ideas presented here just scratch the surface. Much more is covered in the publications listed, and I'll build on these in Semiotics 0.02, the next micro lecture. Till then, this is Alan McEachran from the GeoVista Center at Penn State.